What is up, heroes? This is Midnight Zero, and welcome back to Let's Play Banjo Kazooie. In the last episode, we went through Mad Monster Mansion. We, rather, we fumbled around Mad Monster Mansion. It took us quite a bit, and I felt quite silly because I forgot that I could just bust open the various gates that were giving me a lot of difficulty as I tried to maneuver around the level. But I also recalled, as I was going through Gruntilda's Lair trying to get back to Mad Monster Mansion, that we unlocked in Gruntilda's Lair a Jiggy, as you can see right there. So now I'm trying to think of how I'm actually going to want to go about getting that and I think I may need to fly again so I think that's what we'll do right now is head over here and again do that little essentially mini game where we try to navigate to the flight pad as quickly as we can and then we can fly up there and pick that up I, I there might be some other means of doing that reasonably but they're just not Whoa! I almost I almost forgot about actually hitting the switch but for the time being, I'm unaware of them, so... Let's head on over and see what we can find. I don't like stairs much in my lair. They always make me gasp for air. Alright, come on. Fly, fly, fly! That was like, last second possible. I'm sure that made quite a few of you nervous. And with that... What? Oh, wait a minute. I just realized... Nope, don't, don't land. <laughs> okay, so I probably need to bust that open. I'm trying to remember what the button is to do the uh, attack with Kazooie. Is it B? Probably. Nice. Now let's go pick it up. Alright. <laughs> Banjo wasn't doing it, uh, so had to add it in myself. Alright, now we can head back to Mad Monster Mansion. And we have one more little area to explore, right? So I know that there were those tombstones. I'm actually quite curious to see if they are vulnerable, meaning we can actually attack them, or if we're going to have to use something like our invulnerability, like an invincibility feathers to actually attack them. But the other thing, and the, the most important thing was, we need to go back in and transform into a pumpkin so we can go to that shed in the back corner. What's kind of funny is, as I was thinking about what games I want to play last night after having played Man Monster Mansion, I was definitely in more of a horror mood. Obviously, Mad Monster Mansion is not an exceptionally scary. <laughs> What's so funny is you can totally see which tombstones are going to be the ones to attack you. If you just look and see how much more, like, the saturation and the color is just completely different, right? Okay, making sure that gate is busted. Alright, let's head back on into Mad Monster Mansion, and we can basically speedrun on over to Mumbo. What? That's not what I wanted. I thought I was going to be still in my Talon Trot. <laughs> Now that we know that even if the gate is back, we can just bust it open. <laughs> I can't even believe I had so much difficulty with this. <laughs> Didn't realize that I could just do that. I should have at least tried. I think that's the main thing that's really getting me. You'll note that a lot of the progress we made in terms of planting those uh, flowers and all that stuff has been undone, unfortunately. We leave for one second and the place just falls apart to shambles. Okay, so back into a pumpkin we go. You'll note again, of course, that we don't need to pay another Mumbo Token fee, which would be pretty ridiculous given the limited number of Mumbo Tokens there are. You can jump through there for the sake of it. In case you forget to bust open that gate, you can always do that. And we'll bounce our way, we'll boing our way back. Oops, camera switching on me. And the pad's back over here. Sorry about that interruption, but now we can leave Mad Monster Mansion, and we should be good to explore. Oh, we gotta avoid the tombstone, though. Run, Pumpkin Banjo, run! Oh, darn it, we are not fast enough to outpace the tombstone, unfortunately. But now we can head on over here. And go into this little, little shed back here. I forget what's in here. I think it's a switch, right? So there's a mumbo switch there. Is that thing going to attack us? Or is it going to wait for us to switch back into Banjo? Alright. So we're back in Banjo form. Just for the sake of my peace of mind. Oh, wait, come on. Let me attack this. Okay, good. 
we can finally take that out. It's like I don't want to waste all these feathers, but we can pick up some of these eggs. We're obviously missing a few. Granted, we don't really need a hundred of them at any point in the game. But I certainly wouldn't want to be looking for them at any point either. Can we open this? We can. Get ourselves a nice invincibility feather. And that is the water switch I had in mind. So that's going to bring the water level up there, which I believe means we can actually do some important things. Can I just break open this door? No, I can't. It's kind of silly that they won't let you just break open the door. My filthy bed gives me a rash. I never wash. I save my cash. <laughs> I'm sure you save cash in one manner doing that, Gruntilda, but I'm sure it's not like it's without its costs, right? Pumpkin making Mumbo hungry. Me get pot ready. No, don't eat us, Mumbo. But yeah, I wish they would just let us break open the door once we're actually inside. Because now we gotta boing around. Granted, we do spend a lot of time as Banjo. We spend a lot of time moving very quickly with Kazooie and the, ta and the Talon Trot. But it is nice every once in a while to be a silly little pumpkin boinging around a level. Alright, and so with that, let's, uh... Everybody can say goodbye to Mad Monster Mansion and its wonderful horror aesthetic as we move onward to swim into new depths. Granted, we're actually not going deeper with our uh, with our diving anymore. We're in fact actually going closer to the surface or higher elevation, but no need to get into those details. Okay. Now it's back to speedrun time. <laughs> Talon trot all the time. Okay. And I'm trying to remember. I know we went up this way. I wonder if that first room is going to be high enough for us to do some platforming in there as well. I'm not sure. Or if we need to increase the, the elevation of the water even higher to get up there. And it seems so, because we cannot access a platform from where we're at currently, unfortunately. So we'll fly on, we'll swim on over to that other area, and we'll see what we can access there. We'll probably have to get another switch while we're in there to move it from where its current level is to an even higher level. But for the time being, we can access this ship, which is ultimately what we were looking for. Anything hidden under the staircase? No. No Harry Potter visible. And anything over this way? Nope. Alright, so we'll head on up the ramp. Stairs, rather. Got a nice door there. I was gonna say, I figured they would attack me, but I thought I could speed on by with my Talon Trot. And speed on by, I did. What's going on over here? This little rare box. Ah, yes, the final water switch. Is there anything I want to do at this water level first, though? Is the question. Hmm. I'm going to try breaking that door. This might seem silly, but just to be safe, I'm going to try breaking that door, because even if I raise the water level and that door opens, I can always swim through it, right? Okay, I didn't think so. But I just wanted to be safe. I would imagine that's going to be our actual entrance to our level, Rusty Bucket Bay. So that's where the text is going to show up and all that, once we finally unlock the level. And we'll have to swim into it, but that's okay. For now, we can go all the way up there. And I'd imagine in our other room, we can go up as well. Do we want to do that first? I'm kind of tempted to do that. Whenever I explore, I'm always that type of player that doesn't like going to the next... If, if there are two paths and you know that one of them is going to be the one that progresses the story, I'll intentionally go the opposite path to explore everything that it has to offer before moving on and actually progressing in the game. We're awfully close to this bomb. What's going on in here? Anything interesting? Invincibility feather? What about on this side? Nothing? Oh, that's kind of surprising. I can break that open. See, guys, I'm learning. I'm learning from my experiences. 
My belly's big, it's rather neat. It's years since I have seen my feet. That's too funny. So this is... Oh, Water Switch 3. Interesting. Do I want to do this right now? Or do I not want to do this right now? I'm gonna... I'm gonna hold off. We can come over here for now. And... Oh, this is a note door. Alright, we'll, we'll come back to this then. That's clearly gating the progress to our next little area. So, all that to do... Well, nothing. But I wanted to see what our options were and what we had available to us. If, I don't want to change the water level and potentially, I guess, either regress and undo what we've done in order to gain access to these areas over here. But I also don't want to uh, forget or, you know, potentially miss something. And again, at this point, I'm not as familiar with the game as I was with the earlier parts of the game, so it is going to be a little bit more guesswork, a little bit more genuine exploration of the area. I knew it. What is going on over here? So we got some supplies, and then, ah, here is our, our painting for Rusty Bucket Bay. We'll add all of our jiggies and unlock it. There you have it. Oh, and did you guys see that? Off in the corner, I could see that now we can actually access a honeycomb piece in the top corner there. What happens if I go over this way? Where is this going to lead me? I'm so curious. It reminds me of that passageway kind of by Bubble Gloop Swamp. Huh. Interesting. Did we already do that one? I'm trying to get a better glimpse of the of the painting in the background. It looks like we did. So interesting. I wonder why that's there. I'd imagine if the water level were different and we still had access to this area, maybe we could break that grate and thus access that area more conveniently, but I don't actually know 100%. So we've made Rusty Bucket Bay available. I've learned the spell, it's really neat. I'll keep it later for your treat. Ah, uh, so it wasn't a honeycomb, unfortunately, but it is a cauldron, which is useful. Albeit, I haven't actually been using them all that frequently, but it's there. So now we can use it. And I think with that being said, it's a good time to hop into Rusty Bucket Bay. Again, we can explore that other area and mess around with the water level again later. Especially because wherever that water switch is, we're not actually, we're able to still, even if we change the water, we can still access that note door, which is probably our next bit of progression. All right, so after um, going all over Gruntilda's Lair, trying to figure out how to get into Rusty Bucket Bay, we're finally in Rusty Bucket Bay. So you'll see this is a rather large level with what's essentially poison water flowing very nicely. And we have this huge ship over here that we can explore. And we're going to be working our way around the perimeter quite a bit. Let's see what we can do here. we got a toll that requires two eggs, I believe. So for a limited time, this is going to be out here and available. And I completely forgot about that already. My oily water in you plunge. You'll lose air while in that grunge. Gotta love it. So... I don't know if... The, is this open for a limited time? I feel like it is. Oh, I really want to get that. You know what? It's worth it. Come on! No! That's unfortunate. Okay. I don't know. Oh, we see a little friend trapped underneath the anchor down there. So we'll need to pay attention to that eventually. And the more and more I look at this, the more inclined I am to think that it's actually not as timed or time sensitive as I had imagined. I really want to get that mumbo, that mumbo token. There's got to be a way to get it that's better than the current setup, right? So maybe we'll come back to that later. It is close to the entrance. One thing I do want to take the time to do right now though, is to, what? No! Wow. <laughs> you guys can already see this will be a little bit of a struggle. I thought I could break through the window there to go into this shed, but it, we'll just go in regularly, I guess. Yeah, I'm, look at this, I can't, or no, I can, okay. I was going to say, I'm fairly confident I'm supposed to be able to access all of this platforming over here. 
but I wasn't able to do it from just that platform, so maybe I had to drop in instead. There's an extra life up there. We'll see if we can get over there at some point. Not that they're incredibly pertinent. Granted, I said that in almost every other episode. In last episode, we had a little bit of a, a situation when we were Pumpkin Banjo. Oh, what? Depth perception was not on point there. Kind of got to wait for the box to tilt in our direction there so we can actually get on it. I like this part of the music a lot. The music in general is very good in this game, period, and in this level, like the others. Ah, so it's kind of off camera there in the corner. Gotta make this jump. Nice. And I think now we're in the clear. But yeah, I specifically like this more mellow aspect of the song as opposed to the kind of uh, stronger start with the more machinery-like sounds. Wait, can we exit here? No, okay. It just looked somewhat like an exit, and again, didn't want to leave any stone unturned. All right, we can use the launch pad, make our way up, and get ourselves an extra life. Again, not particularly pertinent. Just want to make sure I'm not missing any notes. Again, with a lot of these levels, you really want to make sure that if there are hidden caverns or anything like that, rooms that are otherwise difficult to access, you're not missing out on any of them. Under the scum, you'll breathe your last, because air is used twice as fast. That is good to know, especially given that we are pretty low. Can I jump onto this? Oh, what? Snackers is here. Run, Banjo, run! Run! Or rather, swim. Darn it, he got us. Oh, but he doesn't take our air away. He takes regular honeycombs away. Okay. So we've got a Jinjo over here. That we have successfully rescued on this little buoy. I love that it's got, like, a flag with the Jinjo, too. It's like, Island Jinjo. So, while we're here, we might want to see if we can do something about this. I don't remember, so... It's trapped underneath the anchor, right? I'm trapped. Help! Get this thing off Snorkel! Can I swim in here? I don't remember if that's the case or not. But, let's see. I think that might be what we do. It's looking more and more like it, and wow, we are low on air. <laughs> that ate up a ton of our air. Okay, so we refresh for a moment. Let's inspect this area, because again, I was a little bit of a rush to leave, but... So the anchor is even further up top, so we can't really do much about that anchor in this room, but we did find a neat area to explore, right? With all these guys to attack. Again, we're gonna leave the honeycombs out. Oh, I actually need one of those though, right? Or two of them. That's right, Snacker got to us twice. And now we're in this room, which has these, like, sailor minions. <laughs> they look like little goblins to me. Oh man, I missed. I was a little bit early, but that's okay. Again, plenty of health lying around waiting for us. We'll pick up these notes. Only at eight so far. Again, they're a little bit more sparse in this area. Anything else in the room that I should be noting? Don't think so. All right, then we'll remove the anchor, and that should free our friend Snorkel. Thanks, guys. I found this earlier. It's yours. Lovely. <laughs> Snorkel's so happy. Swim it away. Okay. And so with that, we try to get reoriented to see where we can actually exit the room. And it's over here. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute, where's that exit again? And so now we gotta try and swim and pick up that jiggy as fast as we can. So, down we go. There it is. Okay, pick up the jiggy. Nice. And now, get up to air as fast as possible, come on! So we can make our way to that ladder. You'll see that there are a couple ladders scattered around, so it's not like we have to come back here every single time. But it is, notably, um, important to come back here. Because especially at the beginning of the level, that's where we're going to be spending most of our time. So now we've got a little bit of a tight platforming. This this is the window I can break. I see. 
I don't know, I don't think there's any point in doing that now. Maybe before we leave the level, if I'm like struggling to find something I know I need, whether that be a note or a jiggy or something, I'll take another look, but I don't think we're gonna need to do that now. And there's nothing on this end, okay. You got some toxic waste over there, but the Jinjo, what are these Jinjos doing stranded on these little islands in these levels? So they tell us that to basically indicate that there's, you know, some not so good stuff going on here. If I recall correctly, these platforms will sink. No, it looks like they just kind of tilt and tumble. Ooh, wow. All the way over here, Jinjo obtained. I actually really like the- oh, what? I missed my, my jump off the platform, and so I just did a double jump slash flutter as soon as I walked off, but we're okay. We are a-okay. Anything else I'm missing around here? We got ourselves another ladder. Always good to be aware of where the ladders are so you don't drown. We got a friend here. Ahem. <clears throat> Changed my mind. Defriending. Right away. So we can get across here. I'll open up the toll. Just to be safe. But again, you can see that on the left there, there's some stuff that we can climb up. And I'm gonna be interested in exploring. So let's head on up. Oh, well that didn't really work as planned. So we'll come to the side. We've got some notes we can pick up, lovely. And can we go even further? We can. It looks like there's a switch we can press too. So we'll come back and probably do that in a moment. Or, or now, I guess. Now is better than ever, I guess. <laughs> let's see what this switch does. Ah, nice. So it raises that cage. <clears throat> is it on timer? It is. So we've got to be really fast about this, I guess. We haven't even seen where that is. But we'll try and do what we can. Come on, come on, come on. All right, we're just going to go for it. Don't get trapped in the cage yourself, though, Banjo. No! <laughs> okay, we're safe. But, um... <laughs> it's funny. I remember the first time I did doing that, I was like, What? No, Banjo, don't get trapped! Am I gonna break the game? Is it a soft lock? I think we can actually go in that, but... Let's see here, I wanted to take a second... Oh, or I guess not. To look over... Was there anything we jumped over or missed at the end here? I don't... I don't think so. I think we're okay. We'll continue exploring the perimeter later, because obviously there's a lot going on over there, too. But right now we're on the ship, so let's... Let's give it a look. I think these, some of these are enemies. Yeah, can I attack them? Or, I guess not. I guess we can't attack them. <laughs> My bad, guys. <clears throat> Either way, now we're in the, the quarters of the uh, <laughs> sailors. I love the music change, it's so funny. It sounds like you're in somebody's, you know, living quarters, right? Oh, there's a tiny one here? That's really funny. Just like hanging out in the fridge. Is that like the equivalent of a rat problem in the world of Banjo-Kazooie? You have those things in your fridge? Oh, don't miss the note. Got a cutting board. I, I am a little disappointed that there's no food. So we get damaged for it, but we'll take it. Stupid bear, you'll have to learn that red hot ovens tend to burn. Was that? That didn't rhyme, right? That, I don't think that rhymed. Grunty, you're losing your touch. All right, so I think we got everything from in here. So I guess we can uh, head on out. Leave the kitchen, I guess. There's a lifeboat there, but again, we have all of the... Actually, can I, can I go in these windows? I can, can't I? <laughs> I'm glad I did, too. Look at that. Can I break that open? Again, a rat problem. I love how the maps, while fun to explore and still large to a certain extent, are not... Wow, when was the last time I used that attack, let alone actually hit somebody with it? They're very dense, meaning, you know, you're, I'm on the ship, but there are multiple little areas you can explore. There are the the windows you can break open, etc. And, I don't know, it, it's not like you're spending a ton of time traveling around trying to find new areas. 
you're doing a little bit of traveling in between different areas, right? It's not... Well, some people, you know, have different preferences, but it's not like Breath of the Wild, for example, where you could, one would argue that, you know, the entirety of the adventure is that in-between, right? Moving from one place to the next. What? I, I swear I was out of range there. Ah, uh, of course. I was going to say, of course the one that's next to the enemy is going to be the one that we can actually enter. Alright, we got our friends in here. What do they got hidden on their, their beds? Can we go on up in the bunk? We can, if I angle my momentum right. Anything interesting on the wall? Or is it just kind of fill in? Looks like it. Apparently got some pictures from home or something of the like. I was gonna say, can I can I get this guy? Alright, let's see what's on the other side. Banjo? <laughs> you alright there? You guys see that? He was like stuck in freefall for a moment. Oh, and did you guys see that? I saw that. That looks like Conquer over there to me. I shouldn't be getting these red feathers because we're full on them, but look, that's Conquer there. I don't know if that was actually in the original. I think Conquer came out later. Doesn't mean they couldn't have had like concept art or whatever in the making for it, but that's pretty neat that they do that. Any notes? I, was there really just one note in here, or am I forgetting about a different one I got? Because I think we have a pretty odd number of a note total right now. But hey, if that's if that's what it is, that's what it is. Now, I think there was some other stuff I was still trying to explore in this area, right? Like the various windows that could potentially be broken or not. We've got a potential code here to mess around with. We'll work on that in a little bit. Gotta put my Professor Layton cap on. Can I break one of these? I can. So this is why I didn't want to move on, right? <laughs> Gotta make sure I really explore everything. Hi! For some reason, it sounds kind of like a like a parrot voice, right? Oh, I should have gotten that. Another mumbo token. They got the maps. They're trying to chart everything. Is that... No, is that maybe like loosely based off of Japan? I don't know. I'm sure there's... I highly doubt those are completely random. But at the same time, I can't make much sense out of those maps. I guess Rusty Bucket Bay... They're probably, you know, docked for some reason, right? They're freshing up on... Oh, did you guys see that? Camera, please. There was an invincibility feather. Ah, I thought it might have been a grunty switch. I think I actually have an idea of where the grunty switch is in this level. Oh, and you can see that... Ah, oh, what are those even called? I'm trying to remember what the, like, actual term for that is. Can I do something with these? I can. Oh, so we take damage every time that, um... We get that incorrect. I'll wait for the proper, I don't know, code or whatever. Obviously, it doesn't start with one, so there are actually only four options left that it could be. And um, that's all right. We could easily guess through them with the amount of health we have, but we, we won't for the sake of, I don't know, playing the game as intended, right? For whatever that's worth. There's a launch pad over here, so before we go across, let's see what this shows us. A mumbo token. Alright, I mean, we take those. Oh, there's the grunty switch, yeah. And then, we get a nice little vantage of the rest of the level. We'll come down here so we can pick up these notes. Camera, going a little, little crazy at the moment. But it's alright, we'll persevere. Anything up here? A jiggy, nice. I was gonna say, there's probably a Jiggy at the top of these. This sounds like the great type of place that, or the place that they would want to put a Jiggy. Now, where was that crane that we initially climbed? That one. Okay, so we haven't fully explored the other side of the ship yet. I think we've really touched on every area here that we could want to. So let's explore over here. Is that gonna attack us? It's not. All right, well, let's check these windows real quick. You can kind of tell which ones are ones that you can explore and ones that you can't explore. Let's get these before I forget. They are close to the beginning, though, so... Probably would have found them regardless, but looks like we can jump in this one. 
What are we gonna find in here? It's like a maintenance room of some Jesus. <laughs> Fallen immediately, just boom. So this is obviously where they're making all of the boxes that blow up. And so I think the idea here is maybe this is an area to to test out your, your comfort with that enemy and try to figure out a way to actually get rid of them. And I'm, as you saw, you can hit them with eggs to do damage. So you're not trying to... Is there something behind that pipe over here? There is. There's an invincibility feather. But yeah, so you're not actually having to get close to them for when they explode and, you know, you take damage as well. Anything else in here I'm missing? Just that honeycomb? Okay, then I think we're actually alright. Again, I don't like the number that we have for our collectibles, or our notes. We're at 59, right? Was there really just one in that room? It's very possible. There's a rare logo, which is nice. Yeah, that has me quite concerned. But this level, I should say, was one of my least favorites because it was so easy to die in one particular area of this uh, level that I think we may actually be getting to now. So, let's see. It's in like the machine room of the ship. And yeah, it's so easy to die. And in the old game, your notes wouldn't be, I guess, like preserved afterwards. Can I go up here? I can. Ah, nice, so we found one of those. But yeah, so when you die, you would have a high score for the notes of a level, but you wouldn't actually... What's it called? You wouldn't actually save the notes in that when you come back to the level, you could get a new high score by collecting more notes, but the notes you previously collected would still be there as if you hadn't collected them in the past, and you'd have to collect them again if you wanted to update your high score, which was less than ideal, to say the least. So yeah, this is it. This spot right here... This does so much damage, and the thing is, because of the texture in the design of these pipes, it's so easy to get hit by the recoil from the damage and slide off and fall to your death. Not just damage, death. So, I'm trying to remember. Do these slow down eventually? I think they do. Okay, so yeah, we'll, we'll explore this briefly first. There's obviously a Mumbo token over there. I'm very tempted to get. Honestly, I'm going to get. So we'll do that once it slows down again. What? No! Are you kidding me? That was so brief! That was so brief! Wow. <laughs> I thought I could, like, jump on and then immediately jump um, again to kind of balance myself a bit better. Wow. So that's why I really dislike this level. Is for that specific area. I mean, obviously you can get through the game without spending a lot of time here specifically. But, but again, oh man, the completionist in me would have to do this every single time. <laughs> wow, so you really have to wait for it to be completely stopped. It's been a while since I've done it, obviously. And so even I'm surprised by how specific it has to be. Alright. Wow, and that really doesn't leave a lot of time. Maybe it's different if I'm in the Talon Trot. So I can jump out there in the Talon Trot when it's still slowing down a little bit and then be ready to move, I guess. Come on, come on. Oh, no! I didn't even get it! No! Jump off! Jump off! No! Come on! <laughs> My perception I was, was off, I guess. Wow, and so we're already at two lives. So this is where those extra lives would have come in handy, right? So long as they didn't reset in between, I guess, boots of the game. So unfortunately, they don't really mean much when you play for, you know, half an hour to an hour at a time. But oh well, I think we, there's something we can do to actually stop the the wheels or whatever from spinning I'm trying to remember yeah it looks like it's over there so let's go ahead and see if we can hit that first I don't know if it's just the propeller blades or if it's the entirety of the the fan 
and you can see this is going to be pretty difficult, right? It's stuck on this sort of sideways configuration. So we're going to have to jump out here, do this, and then run, jump. Okay, good. So let's pick up this extra life before we do anything else, just because we are clearly using them. Can I break this? No, I can't. Okay, I have to get in there some other manner. What happens if I stop this? There's a Jiggy there, so we'll, we'll try to get that in a moment, but does it slow down everything? Oh, no, it's those. Is it even these propellers? No, it's not. Interesting. Okay, so I think we can actually use invincibility to get through this. So that's what I'm going to try now. Let's do that and hope for the best. Nope, unsuccessful. Okay, so we'll we'll try to figure something else out then. This also means that that mumbo token is something we will have to get in that manner that I was trying to get it before. I need to make sure my depth perception is on point, I guess. Although it does seem a little bit slower now, doesn't it? Alright, come on, come on, Banjo. Yeah, it doesn't seem like it's spinning as much. Maybe that's supposed to be an indicator to me that there's another switch I need to hit if I want to completely stop everything, not just slow it down. And there, sure enough, you can see over there is going to be another one. All right, so this configuration is a bit different. So we hit this one. That slows the propellers down even further. I just don't know if it's for a limited amount of time or not. And it looks like those it is for a limited amount of time. Okay. Are those stopped? No, they aren't. Darn. So, I'll, I'll take this moment to... I think there's a mumbo token there, yeah. While those are stopped spinning, I'll come over here and I'll pick this up. Just because, again, I want to collect them. They're not incredibly important in terms of completing the game. But, interesting. I don't remember how to stop those. There, I don't think there's another one. Can I get through here? Well, I did, so so we'll take that, but is there some other way that I'm supposed to do this? Do I need to just slow it down enough that I could get through, or what? So much for playing the game as intended, right? Uh-oh, I might be stuck here, guys. I think I got lucky before with the, the placement. Especially because they look like they're speeding up. Uh-oh. <laughs> A simple task, you were sure. But Grunty's engines start once more. That doesn't... that doesn't rhyme. Alright, well... Guys, this might be... This might be the end of our run. Let's see here. Go through... Can I make it? Nope. Alright, we'll try again. Come on. Come on. We only get one more try. Alright, well, looks like we're going to have to get pretty creative to get out of here. Anything that I can use to my advantage? How in the world am I supposed to slow this down, then? There's got to be some other external switch or something, and maybe that control room on the side, but... For the time being, what can I do? What can I do? The only thing I can think of is trying to maybe jump over here when that end slows down. Is it even slowing down? Or now that we've gotten this jiggy, is it just permanently going to be moving super fast? It definitely doesn't look like it's going to be slowing down anytime soon, right? Maybe it's because the game assumes that I've been able to stop these propeller blades. Let's see. <laughs> this is totally not going to work. I'm so dead, guys. You can also see just how the angle of my launch my jump there screwed up my recoil and consequently made me fall into that pit. So you can see why as a kid especially, when you're trying to get all 100 notes and you just need those last four behind those propeller blades, that it gets to be incredibly difficult. Okay, so let's head in here one last time. We'll go all the way down and then it's pretty much a race against the clock. Can I break this? No, I can't. 
where we'll hit those switches on the side and then we'll see what we can do in terms of getting out of the, the boat as fast as possible and then trying to swim to where the, the propellers are so that we can get those that jiggy that's in the back of the boat as quickly as possible. Interesting. So maybe these are the only ones that actually will slow down after some time. I don't even think I could have made that jump from before. So it's not like it's a huge deal. Yeah, because I don't think those other ones slow down at all. They're not like these ones that are near us. Okay. Jump. I guess one thing that's at least nice is they always give an extra life here. So you can always find them. Ah, yes. I can almost guarantee you that that switch there is what slows down the propellers in the middle. So we got that jiggy at, in an unintended manner. For what it's worth, we'll eventually go to that control room just because we need to get the notes in there. So it's not like we're going to not explore that area. We'll, we'll check every area of the level, I promise. But we're obviously... We, did not, we were not supposed to get that jiggy the way that we did. It's just that it reminded me of the tutorial area for the the invincibility feathers, right? With those spinning propeller blades, I was like, maybe we can get through. And I guess I had gotten far enough through the blades that my hitbox was on the opposite side of the propellers. And as a result, I want to make sure I do this when it's just about ready. There we go. Hopefully that timer wasn't continuing while the cutscene is playing. Okay, good. But it looked like it was just about right. And similar to the propellers that were playing in Clanker's Cavern when we unlocked that ability. And so our hitbox must have just been on the opposite side. So when we got hit, our recoil was... Let us do that. What? What? I swear I got that one. So that's going to eat up a ton of time. I would not be surprised if... Now we can't make it through. I should have just done a, an attack to be safe. But I could swear that that was the side that I'd already beaten. But you know what? I bet that it reset because of everything with... Um, uh, are we going to make it? I doubt it. Yeah, there's no way we're going to make it. We'll try. We'll still try. Because we have five seconds. But I'm not optimistic. Come on. Darn. A simple task, you were sure. Yeah. Is it even on this side, or is it the opposite end? Oh my goodness, we're almost dead. Do you guys see that? Okay, so we actually would have made it, worth noting, had we chosen the correct side, but we are almost dead from this toxic water. Come on, come on. Whew. That was a lot more dangerous than I would like to admit. So we'll come back to that. We're obviously pretty far away. From where we need to go in order to get in there. So what we'll do is... We'll just continue off with our toll over in this area. Like we were before. And we'll eventually make our way back onto the ship. we go in here? We can. The question is, what are we going to find? No, okay. One of those guys. Yeah, I bet that the enemy came back because we died. So, I had been counting on... <laughs> Great. I had been counting on the enemy being gone, so I wouldn't have to actually do the attack, and I think I actually remembered the correct side, but again, we unfortunately did not accommodate for the fact that enemies come back when you restart the level. So here we are. One jiggy less than what we would expect. But we'll persevere. Those B sounds are lovely, aren't they? <laughs> so 79 notes. Again, that number makes me very uneasy. It really makes me feel like I've missed one. And as I've mentioned before in previous levels, and especially this level, looking for missing notes at the end of a level is one of the most painful experiences in this game. 
All right, let's see what's in this crate. Some more notes, okay. And some of these boxes. Darn. So when you get close enough, they will attack you and they'll run after you. And they're fast enough that there's not a lot you can do about it Ugh. once they start to do that. So I can't see this other one. There we go. That should be good. Oh, earned ourselves an extra life. Nice. We can fill up on our eggs. Supposedly, we're going to need them if we're going to be fighting more of those enemies, right? So, that was a worthwhile exploration. And I guess if we are going to be needing more of our eggs, I figured... I saw these and I walked by because, again, who really needs a hundred of them? But we might as well take them. These boxes are very conveniently placed, though, right? So I can't do that, but... Oh, I see. So what's in this middle box? What's going on down here? Actually, I should just take a look first. There's a Jinjo, a Mumbo token. Any notes? Was that an enemy? Ah, some sailors. Okay. And there are also plenty of red feathers for flight. Which is kind of weird because... Oh, and invincibility feathers too. Because I haven't seen any flight pads yet, so there's clearly something to do there. I saw the Jinjo, I don't know where it actually is though. Let's take out these sailors before I end up accidentally like falling on them and losing a bunch of health. Are you hitting over here? That's where you are. And there are still two Jinjos for us to find. So unlike, what was it, Mad Monster Mansion where we pretty much found all of the Jinjos like very quickly, Rusty Bucket Bay has proven to be the opposite, where we're spending quite a bit of time exploring the level, but we're just over halfway in terms of finding all of the Jinjos. Now, I'm not seeing a lot. Granted, visibility isn't the best in this area. Let me come up here and see if there's anything on this top level that I might be missing. Because I certainly wouldn't want to, again, miss a single note in a place like this. Or an extra honeycomb piece. We found one of them, but I don't recall where the second one is. So again, that's going to be something we're going to have to very genuinely, candidly find. So I can't get across here without being on the other side. So I think now we'll head back up our crane over here, and we'll head back up onto the ship. But yeah, I'm, I'm confident that there's got to be a flight pad at some point, right? There's no way that they would include this many red feathers without any means of actually using them. Whoa, did you guys see that? <laughs> I like slid on top of the triangle of the up arrow switch there. Oh, why did I do that? I kind of did that just out of, just out of instinct. But I definitely didn't need to. So we'll head up here. We can grab another invincibility feather because again, we exhausted all of them trying to make up for my mistake. <laughs> We still haven't found out what that code is. Am I supposed to know what it is? Or am I supposed to just guess it? It's not two. So it starts with three. One, two. So we did it, right? Three, one, two. Oh, is it more than three? I guess the code is more than three digits. Well, that's good to know. Now, actually, let me check here. Is there an area that I can, like a room that I can enter on this side, or is it just on the other side? I think it's just on the other side. And it's also worth noting the propellers are back over on this side of the ship. So when I, when I run off of here, that should be what I do. So before I actually do that, let's see, is there anything else I can do while I'm here? I could climb up this. There's the grunty switch over there. Can I fly to that? Is that a Jinjo there? No, that's a launch pad. Okay. There's a feather there, so I could climb down this. I'm tempted though, can I make this jump? I doubt it. Yeah, I doubt it. I bet I have to do something with the crane first. Is there a button I could press? There is. So let's, let's check out what I can do with that first. Speed things up a little bit there. <laughs> Oops, wrong button. 
Now, what happens if we drop this TNT box? Kaboom! So we open up a big area there. So we'll check that out in a moment. We'll come back onto the switch or onto the ship in a minute. I want to check out what's going on over here though first. So this requires quite a few eggs for its toll. And while we're here as well, I might as well open this one too, just to make it easier to access that other aspect of the ship too. So it probably was a good idea to pick up those eggs, right? Because we've used up quite a few of them already. Now, notably, this path... Well, actually, it's not that crazy complicated by any means. But it wasn't, I guess, a straight path, which is relatively complicated. And it leads to a Jinjo. Lovely. Oh, look at the rare flag at the front of the ship. That's that's great. I love that. Also, this is just a great picture of the ship in general. It's very nice. So I don't think there's much else for us to do on this part of the level, so we can head back to the ship. So I'm glad that we explored that before going back onto the ship too, because now we can kind of just focus our efforts on that area. And of course, when we get to the very front of the ship... Actually, is it the front or the back? Oh, camera! <laughs> Do you guys see that? The camera does like a random 180 like that. And then all of a sudden I'm walking off the crane, I just tried to climb up. Is it the front or the back? Actually, I think it's the back. Yeah, so it's the flag that's just on the back though. How can I get up there? I don't see a flight pad. Maybe I do just have to kind of jump off and flutter over. Wow, that was a really close call. Ah, so that's what we find in that one room up top there. And then let's take advantage of this vantage point. So we have some notes over there. Do we have anything else going on over there? Nothing exceptional. But we can come down here now and see what we find in the back of the ship. We've got some notes. We're still trying to keep an eye out. Oh, we can climb that. That's nice. Still trying to keep an eye out for that last honeycomb piece. Oh, and now, interesting, so that was another odd number of notes. So now we're at 92, there are four there, and there are probably four in that one control room. Wow, what a different changer. Oh, I realized, look at it. So this one's a little bit different. It has more of a brown interior and a lighter outside compared to this one here. So I think we can actually go in this one. That we can. So this is that control room. One, two, three, four, where if we do this, Please tell me. Yep, that's what slows those down. And so with that, you can more safely get through them. I don't know if it's permanent though. It seems like it is. Wow, so that would have been a good investment <laughs> in our journey rather than trying to get through it the way that, well, I did. So I guess this falls into the category of don't try this at home, kids. And I saw an invincibility feather over here, so we'll, we'll grab that while we're here. And... Yeah, with that we can we can head on up. We can also know that with those notes over there, we have found all of the notes in the level, which is great. So I don't need to stress about finding them anymore. What I am wondering about though, is there some place where I can find a code? Oh, there's a mumbo token, and of course I fall for it. <laughs> of course I fall for that. Hmm. Yeah, where would that secret honey honeycomb piece be, and where can we find that code? So is this what I think it is? If I recall correctly, we might be fighting a rather large box friend here. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Who dares enter Boss Boombox's hold? I've hidden my jigsaw. You'll never get it. All right. So my strategy as a kid was to do this: is to just kind of stand in a in a corner and spit out eggs this way. That way he, ca he can't get too close and he takes a bunch of damage and it's kind of ready to go right when it happens. I think if I recall correctly he like splits into smaller boxes as time goes on. And the funny thing is because they home on you, you can afford to do this and you know you won't miss. So, Banjo-Kazooie Pro Strats right here. 
The only problem is potentially running out of eggs. Wow, I'm really glad that we got those extras earlier. Maybe I should just aim. Seems to be a little bit more effective. <laughs> got a little bit of a stun loop going. Gotta do some running a little bit. So we can get away. Pick up some eggs. Did we pick up these ones earlier, or did they just respawn? Gotta cover our trail as we as we run away. Wow, did you guys see that? He just like plowed on through. And we are running low on eggs. At some point we might need to switch to invincibility feathers, actually. So I think we broke so we broke those two boxes. Oh, and they broke into smaller boxes too? And yeah, we're we're pretty close to being out of eggs at this point, which is not very good. So can I actually attack them? Alright, we're gonna we're gonna go invincibility. Come on. Wow, so that was a very close call. Arr, you splintered me. Take this. I didn't want it really. <laughs> okay. And we used up all of our eggs. Here I am talking <laughs> throughout the whole episode. How frequently do we actually need a hundred of those eggs, right? But but here I am. Having exhausted every last one of them. So we still need three jiggies from this area. There's the one from the propellers at the back of the boat. There's one from that code potentially, right? And I'm not sure where the last one would be. Oh no, it's from the Jinjos, right? We haven't found one of the Jinjos. Where would that Jinjo be? There might be a... There's probably... Did I hear... No, I don't think I heard one. But... We definitely could use some health. That's for sure. It's probably one of these rooms that I just missed. Did I go in this one? I think I did. Uh-oh. We're approaching that segment of the game where we're really trying to find everything. And I think I've explored most of the area. That's the tough part. So I think this is an enemy. Yep. What? No, 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 don't fall off! <sighs> Man. The recoil. Okay, so what we are going to do now... I think, if I had to guess, there's some place in the water, maybe towards the back of the ship, that has the Jinjo. So we'll aim for our propeller jiggy now, and see what we can do with that. I won't hit that switch again. <laughs> I'll remember that that's useless now. Wow, this level's taking a while. I knew I knew that this level would be the longest for me. Just always is. What am I supposed to do with this code here? I haven't found anything about it, right? Three, one, two, maybe three again? Nope. Oh, what? I lost two honeycombs for that? Okay. Change of pace. <laughs> We're gonna we're gonna heal up a bit before we try that again. Maybe it's actually reasonable to go get those notes first. What did you guys camera? Please don't do this to me. Don't just immediately shift and have me fall off this platform. We need all the eggs we can get. But yeah, I should just come over here. I can get those last four notes, so I've completed that and I have that off you know, off my mind. We gotta run past this box, though. Oh, I bet... I bet there's a Jiggy and a Jinjo under here. I would totally bet on that. You found all 100 notes on this world. Come on. There we go. Okay. So now, we'll use another one of our eggs to get this. And now, we'll speed on through to heal up a bit. But yeah, I'm fairly confident that that's where I need to go, actually. That area down there. To get the last Jinjo, there might even be a Jiggy down there. Then what does that passcode do? 
Hmm. Not sure. You can probably jump on this to get up here a little bit more easily. All right, take two, right? And we're gonna kill both of these first, just to cover our bases. So I don't even have to think about it. Made sure. I can afford to just jump and then flutter as I get towards the bottom. All right, let's give this a go. <laughs> Finally. Is it just frozen in place now, or no? Okay, but it seemed to be moving a little bit more slowly than before. Maybe that's a result of us hitting that switch? But I th would think that that only affected the propeller blade, so I'm not entirely convinced. And it looks like it's not even a, a permanent change, because it doesn't look significantly slower than it did before. Because if those were stopped or slower, it would actually be more convenient to go that route than, than on the side here. I feel like this is a little bit more of risky platforming. Alright, so we got that one. That slows that down. Oh, and this will give me a good idea of whether or not these play during cutscenes. And it doesn't seem so. Okay. So the cutscenes freeze all of the sort of in-game activities. Which is not always the case, right? So like these things, these platforms are on a cycle that they're moving through. And so it's not always guaranteed that during a cutscene they'll be paused. But in this case, we've confirmed that they do. All right, so let's let's get ready to do this. I want to wait just until it's about to be finished, or just finished, I guess. And now we can run for it. Run, Banjo, run! So this is stopped, so that's good. We can do this. That was questionable at best. And now, come on. We don't have to worry about getting attacked by any of those monsters because we've already taken out both of them. And we know the right direction to go on the ship. Because before, even when I was potentially going to be making it on time, I ran towards the wrong end of the ship. Okay, so let's go this way. Yes. So we can go up here, and then all the way in back. We've got a fair amount of time, I believe. And it's in the left one. No. Oh, it's just in between. I wonder if I'd still take damage if I hit the propeller blades. We're gonna try not to find out, though. Okay. Let's take a breather over here, and you can see in the corner down here, we can go through there. Is there maybe... Let's see, Rusty Bucket? T-W-Y Cross? England? Something I'm missing? Twy Cross? I thought maybe there would be a hint as far as the code goes for the threes, twos, ones, etc. But doesn't seem so. Alright, well, let's head on over here and see what we can find. There is a Jinjo. So we'll pick that up. Is Snackers going to be here waiting for us? Nice. So we've got all of those. Is it possible for me to swim up? Briefly, but it's not actually all that helpful. Oh, this is gonna be. This is gonna be. No, come on, Banjo. Up, 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 up. This is gonna be really close call. Because I need to make it to that box. Whew. Come on. There we go. Okay, so I didn't even get a good look of what else was in there. I don't think there was a. I don't think there was anything else relevant. Oh, there was a box right here, too. That's good to know. Maybe I can take... I can get a better look. Oh, that's right. The, the bees are going to attack me, though. Okay. Well, while I'm running away from the bees, we can briefly look down this grate and see if there's anything else. I don't see anything else. So I do think the last jiggy we need is related to... Hmm, that code. But we also haven't found the re remaining secret honeycomb piece, which also has me concerned. So, I'm kind of curious, is there something at the top of this box? Also, I'm shocked that there hasn't been a flight pad throughout the entire level in this camera. <laughs> Sometimes, it is certainly a struggle. That is for sure. I really want to get that mumbo token. We are so low on eggs now. It's almost comical. Can I break these? No, I can't. 
we can bring this out. But unfortunately, again, camera. I don't know if I can actually get that or not. Let's see what happens when I break this window over here, if it gives me access to something that I otherwise would not have access to. I still think we're going to fall into the same area. Yeah. So ultimately, it's not a, a game changer. But is there maybe something hidden? I would bet, if I had to guess, that there was a room in one of the, in the ship that I didn't actually, oh, why, why am I swimming underwater? It's just gonna eat up my time even faster. But yeah, I would bet that there's something underwater maybe in the corner of one of these or something, and that's where the secret honeycomb piece is gonna be. Can I please get an idea of where I'm trying to go? Can I go in there? Is there something down there in the corner? It looks like that might be where I need to go. So let's explore that. I don't know if you guys saw what I was talking about, but underwater, on the opposite end, so not, not over here, but on the opposite end, it looked like there was something that I could enter into this warehouse. So not this one, but the one over there, essentially. Wait, no, don't fall under, don't fall under. Oh, man, Banjo. Oh, I shouldn't have gotten rid of that. I shouldn't have gotten rid of that. Let's see. I can probably still make it in a reasonable time. Actually, no, I can't because oh, I have to jump over. Or no, I can go through here. Wow, what a what a roller coaster of emotions. All right, I'm sorry, snackers, but um, we're gonna come on. Come on. So we made it in here. We were previously not in here. Where are we? Interesting. We are we are getting attacked left and right. But here is the flight pad I, I talked about. We have a, an enemy there. Is there a secret honeycomb piece? Is there a code? Is there something? We're really kind of grasping at this point. Is this supposed to be like a, I don't know, walk the plank type reference? We'll take the invincibility feathers. Again, we're still really low on those from our box fight, so... We're actually, you know, having to pay attention to our restocking and all that. And what is that switch over there? Oops. Missed the, the jump there. There's a switch there. Where did we come in again? We, I think we came in through that entrance there. So, let's see what this has to do. Interesting. It has the, the sort of honeycomb piece on it. What's it going to do, though? Are we timed? I don't think so. All right, then we just gotta fly to it, which is fairly straightforward. And so with that, we'll have collected almost everything. We'll just be missing, oh, I missed it just barely. But we'll be just be missing the last Jiggy, right? <laughs> which is crazy. The Jiggies are usually the first thing I'm able to collect and it's the notes that come later. Awesome, so we have that, we have all the Jinjos. Is there anything else to do? Can I go through one of the windows? No, I can't. Gotcha. Well, then I guess... I guess I'll swim back. This is a pretty well-hidden secret, in my opinion. So this was, this was very well done for this secret honeycomb piece. But yeah, it's obviously related to that code. And I don't know where we're going to find that, that code. And I also don't even know how long the code is supposed to be, right? Which plays a very important role in our ability to do some guesswork. I can almost guarantee we've seen the code at some point, right? Now that we have all of the other collectibles, I'm pretty confident we've explored every area. I probably just didn't notice something or take note of something that I was supposed to see otherwise. So we'll do a little bit more guesswork. We notably take two pieces of, or like honeycombs of damage every time we get it wrong. So we don't have a ton of leeway to work with, but we do have some, especially because we've already gotten the first three and I guess half uh, digits down. So let's see what happens. We know it's three, one, two, and then not three, right? 
Oh, and then there's that mumbo token over there. I really want to get... Wow, this episode is going on forever. Appreciate you guys' patience. Well, I mean, I hope you guys are enjoying it, right? It's Banjo. I wouldn't want to split... I feel like this game lends itself to just completing all of the worlds in one go, right? 3, 1, 2, 1. Okay. 3, 1, 2, 1, 3, probably. Nope. 3, 1, 2, 1, and then maybe 2? Nope. Okay. 3, 1, 2, 1, 1? And we still have to do another one? 2? Nope. Okay. Also, I was wrong about taking two honeycombs of damage. We actually only take one, which is nice. Three, one, two, one, one. Now maybe two? Actually, I can almost guarantee you that's what I did last time, so I apologize. <laughs> Three, one, two, one, one. Now we'll try three. Nope. So it's a third one? Three, one, two, one, another one, and now another one? Wow. So it's a pretty long code. But I'm still curious as to whether or not we were supposed to do that guesswork, right? And so with that, we've completed Rusty Bucket Bay, which is, which is wonderful, right? <laughs> Congratulations due all around. But... Oh man, that was that was rough at the end. Were we really just supposed to guess? I don't remember how I did that one as a kid. Or even when I more recently did it. I, I probably just did the guesswork again. I really want to get this. I really want to get this mumbo token. But I'm not seeing like a very reasonable way of getting it. Let's see, if I line up correctly like this, what I'll do is I'll... I can get a little bit of a, a sliding head start. Nice. All right. Now I can confidently leave Mumbo or leave Rusty Bucket Bay, having obtained at least the Mumbo tokens I can easily access, and all of the jiggies, all of the notes, and the secret honeycomb pieces. Wow, quite an ordeal. That was a pretty tough one. I hope you guys enjoyed it though. Um, you can probably see why it was pretty difficult for a lot of people in general, but then also specifically me as a kid playing the game. Do I want to... No, this, this episode has already gone long enough. So I guess we'll say for the time being, we'll cut things off here. And in the next episode, we'll get that other Jiggy that we unlocked in Gruntilda's Lair. And we'll move on to, I believe, the final level. Um, which is a very fun one. A potentially very long one as well. That one actually might lend itself to splitting up into multiple episodes. And you guys will see why. But I hope you guys are looking forward to it just as much as I am. But until the next episode, this has been Midnight Zero. And this mission is complete.